everybody, welcome back to the Jen's Free YouTube channel with me, Jen. Hope you're all doing okay. Today's video is going to be a water play activity, which I've done before on Gensory, but this one is going to focus in on a particular sensory modality. So stay tuned to find out more about this beautiful multi-sensory one that carries on the tropical theme that I've got running all the way through this month. So I don't need to tell you about the wonderful properties of water. It's a fantastic substance in its own right. And sometimes as practitioners and parents, we forget how exciting water is for our learners, just purely in its purest form. It really is such a fantastic thing. And we can do lots with it just on its own. Now I've got a few little gentry additions here to make it beautifully multi-sensory, as well as having all the wonderful properties that it has. So I'm gonna share those with you in a minute, but I just wanna talk through some of the really cool things that we can do with water to really zone in and understand exactly what it is we wanna get from our learner. Now I've talked about sensory modalities before in my videos, and the way that we want to view this is sort of like a sub-layer underneath the main senses. So obviously we've got the senses that we know, so our sight, our hearing, all of those kind of ones, our proprioception, vestibular being added to those normal five, but then underneath that we've got exactly what we want to kind of get from those senses and that's where the sensory modalities come in so when we're thinking about something like water play we're thinking about all the sort of tactile and touch properties that we can get out of it and sometimes we can overload our learners with lots and lots of different tactile sensations all at the same time and that's lovely and we can have a multi-sensory time doing that but sometimes it's really nice to just focus in on one and for today's one I'm going to focus in on the sensory modality of temperature because water play is a fantastic one to introduce elements of temperature for our learners. We've obviously got all of the wonderful things that we can do with water on its own but we're going to add in that extra dynamic of temperature into the mix too. So if you're thinking about temperature, we obviously want to use a certain temperature water. And I'm going to use a warm, bordering on hot kind of water for this. Now obviously we don't want to use hot, hot, hot water with our learners, but we want it to kind of really get them to understand what warm and hot kind of feels like. So remember, that is a lot to process for some of our learners on its own. So we can use that lovely warm, hot water as the base for this. And let our learner just explore that, because as I say, that is enough sometimes to process it. And we don't really want to be adding smells and bubbles and all of that kind of stuff in yet. So warm water to start off with, that's a kind of good start. Now once our learner has had a lovely time exploring the warmth of the water and had a little play with it, we can add in a contrasting sensation. Now the world is sometimes hot and sometimes cold, so these are sensations that we want to support our learner in understanding and feeling. So with that in mind, I've got some of these reusable ice cubes. Now, I got a tub of these for, I think, two pounds from B&M. If you've watched my videos before, you know that I'm a huge fan of B&M. You can get some brilliant sensory resources there for not a huge amount of money. Um, these ones I love as well because they've got just distilled water inside them. So if you've got learners who actually really like the sensation of these in their mouth and bite in them, it's just water on the inside. So you don't need to worry about them being toxic or, or take them out of your mouth because Sometimes when our learners are mouthing things, it kind of disrupts the flow of play because we're constantly watching to see whether they're going to bite something um, and we don't become good facilitators if we're worried about that. So these are really cool. Two pounds, you can get them at the minute um, in their summer range. So yeah, highly recommend those. So then you can let your learner have a little explore of the warm water alongside the cold ice cubes. Obviously, this is going to promote grasping and releasing skills. So we're gonna get that fine motor development up, um, which is really nice as well as having that that contrasting sensation so that might be enough I say all the time on my videos know your learner know your learner know your learner so if that's enough fine that's great but if you do want to add another little dynamic to the water tray then stay tuned so I'm just going to talk about these other little additions now that we can add in So first and foremost, food colouring. This is Betty Winter's food colouring that you can get from B&M for 65p. It's one of the best places that you can get food colouring cheaply. So I've just got some yellow there because it's a lovely sunshiny tropical colour. So I'm going to add that to my warm water. All that's going to do is provide a little bit of visual contrast. So again, we're not really doing a visual activity here, but it's just going to add that extra dynamic and create a bit more interest. So yeah, we're going to add that in. And then my other two things that I've got here are shampoos. Now shampoos are are fantastic 
fantastic for adding scent into the water and you can get all kinds of really lovely scents now to kind of link in with topics and themes and stuff so I've got two tropical ones here now bear in mind that obviously you're adding this for an olfactory kind of stimulation but because it's shampoo you're going to get bubbles as well so you need to just be mindful of what direction you want your water play to take here so as I say some learners will be fine with just yellow water and the hot and the cold that will be enough to process but as I say if you're kind of thinking actually I think we've had enough of that or I'm a, I know my learner and I know my learner will process this fine you might just want to add in one of these lovely scents. So this one I've got here from Tesco, it's the Extract range and this is the Tropical Shampoo and I wish there was Smell-O-Vision because it smells divine, it's so 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 fruity um, and I think it's just like 90p or something so that's always good to add in so that's a nice tropical one. And then there's this really cool stuff that I again found in B&M, rave about the place, always mention B&M in all of my videos, um, but this is Banana Shampoo. And my goodness, guys, it really smells banana-y. I think it's actually got banana in it, or banana extract or something, but it's just the most banana-y smell. Um, it's almost edible, actually. It's really, really nice, but that really, really makes your water smell so, so banana-y. Like I say, almost edible. So that's a really nice one to get a tropical vibe in it. Now, bear in mind, this is obviously gonna completely change the scent of your water. And again, your learner's gonna need time to process that. Um, and be aware that we're obviously gonna get foam bubbles and stuff as well. So bearing in mind, we're focusing on that sensory modality of temperature, don't rush through this activity. So don't kind of add in the shampoo and the hot water and the cold things all at the same time, because then whilst you might get a lovely multi-sensory time, in terms of kind of focusing in on exactly what you might want to see and how they're processing and how they're responding to a particular thing, you're not going to know that as a practitioner because you're not going to be able to differentiate exactly what it is they're responding to. So I would always say, do this as a big, long, drawn out session um, and add things kind of sta stage by stage, step by step, um, and then you'll know exactly what they're kind of responding to, which is really, really nice to see. Now again, to promote autonomy in your learner, we can give them a choice of scent. So if your learner is ready for choice making, you can smell one and then smell the other and see which one they lean towards. Again, that's going to promote an understanding that two objects are present. So even if they're not at that choice making level, you've got to smell this side and a smell that side. So from a sort of initiation perspective, your learner can lean towards one or reach out to one um, over the other. So that's again, another really nice thing to do. And then what we're essentially doing is taking this into a science route. Now, obviously some of our learners aren't gonna be ready for science in any traditional sense, but what we are doing here is introducing the concept of change. So we've gone from hot, yellow water to water that now has a scent to it and bubbles, which again is another kind of tactile thing to process. So as I mentioned, really take your time with this activity, do it in stages, look at your learner. If you think actually they're enjoying one stage, they don't really necessarily need the next thing, don't move on to it. If actually you just don't really wanna focus on temperature because you think they've got temperature, you might just wanna do this as an early science one and just go straight in with the shampoos. But like I say, multi-sensory doesn't necessarily have to mean all of the senses all at the same time. We don't need to do that. What we need to be looking at is introducing things steadily, one by one, and watching what that reaction is from our learner, because that's when we're gonna see progress. That's when we're gonna see that really, really defined communication from them, and really start to understand what they like, what they don't like, and how we can adapt our provision accordingly. So you know what's coming next, guys. I'm gonna crack on and have a little go to show you some of the effects that you can create with this activity. As I mentioned at the beginning, please don't negate the beautiful effects that water has just on its own. We forget as adults because water is around us all the time and we've seen it a million times, but we forget that our learners sometimes haven't and they're not actually expecting all the beautiful things that can happen with water, especially if they've got a physical limitation and perhaps haven't had that exploratory time with water to understand how it behaves. So bear in mind, water can splash and be loud, but it can also be calm and trickling and tranquil. So think about those properties when you're exploring water with your learner. Have a little pot, have a little jug with you and explore just the wonderful effects that you can make with water on its own. I show you lots of different things in these videos to give you lots of different options. 
but you don't have to use all of them and you certainly don't have to use all of them at the same time. Know your learner, watch them, see what they like, see what they're processing, see what they're motivated by and adapt what you're doing accordingly. done for today i hope it's been really useful for you and just helped you reflect on some of the things that we can really hone in on when we're doing a water play activity if you like the video today please do subscribe to the channel and give it a like down below and do comment it's always lovely to hear from any of you when you do these activities so that's me done i will see you all very soon for another video to carry on the tropical theme on the gentry youtube channel bye